All right, let's let's split this up. We're going to talk about the P4, P5 kind of variants of authorization bugs. Uh, specifically, I'm not talking about privilege escalation or performing authenticated actions as an unauthenticated user in the context of this video. I'm referring to session management related stuff that aren't so much around the, the deep tech side. And the reason that delineation is important is because if I'm just talking about the P4, P5 kind of stuff, I could title this video, how to duplicate near 100% of the time on old programs. And that's probably a scary statement to some because I know a lot of people get really horrible advice of start with those bugs. Now, it's not horrible advice in the context of if you want to be a pen tester and you want to understand the full security flow, which I think should always be your objective. It's actually quite good advice. But if your goal is to make monetary return, then authorization bugs, you know, a new program launches, they're rushed in in the first 30 minutes, if not quicker. So if you're still with me and the, hey, you're going to dupe a lot, <laughs> didn't put you off. Let's talk about common misconceptions because at the end of the day, you should be endeavoring to become the best tester you possibly can and as part of that you need to understand these things because if you do a pen test engagement you're going to need to test for these and you don't want to make a mistake that then lands in QA and someone's like hey there's no exploitable path to this so off the top the forgot password functionality has two key ones that come up quite a bit the first is the passing of session tokens in get data it tends to be something that people are like oh you should never ever do this and they'll report it. And I understand why. Uh, when you're learning how to uh, manage sessions, it's very strongly encouraged in all of the liter literature, correctly so, that you shouldn't pass session rela related information over get data. Get data specifically referring to the variable information you see in a URL um, for, from a limited lens. So that makes sense right you shouldn't do that but then people see hey oh i did a forgot password and there was a session token that came in the url the thing is that you have to do that as a developer you need to pass get data and the biggest websites in the world you can validate this do a forgotten password and you'll see what i mean they need a way to talk to your email client they can't pass post data or across that boundary so they need a way to tie your user to a session they can't you do something what you authenticate with because you're doing a forgot password action you're saying i don't know my authentication information can you give me a session and so rightly so that information is passed through get and it's not actually impactful there's no exploitable path there because it's intended and that risk is accepted due to that i say risk that there isn't a risk there it uh the risk can come into it as different vulnerabilities which is if a reset token can be used more than once and often it can't which leads into the what tends to mitigate the second vulnerability which is if password reset information is set, uh, sent over http and not https and the reason that's typically not an issue but an indication you should probably check ssl implementation for the website because you've got something that hasn't defaulted to ssl um or if it uh, well, let me caveat the way I send, see people report this is the website does default to SSL, but the email itself contains a HTTP link that redirects. Um, it's not exploitable because an adjacent attacker, who even if it was sent over HTTP, is capturing the reset token at the time of consumption. So they're capturing something that's no longer sensitive at the time that they've captured it. It's been used. And in the majority of implementations, it's then no longer available. If the website runs over HTTP, that's a separate issue entirely. The perspective is that a password reset token itself sent over HTTP isn't a reportable issue standalone. It's just an indication that there's other things you should look at. But in isolation, isn't reportable because there's no risk that sits around that. So session information, let's, let's go into that. Uh, what are common mistakes people make around the management of sessions? So session expiry tends to come up a bit because bug bounties orient around larger websites and larger websites tend to use cache 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 pick on my accent on twitter <laughs> it's not even an accent i don't actually know what's correct anymore i've said it wrong for so many years i can never remember what's the right one until someone corrects me and i guess it's kind of pointless correcting me on twitter because it's text format so have fun with that but 
the <laughs> I'm just setting myself up for a flurry at the end. Um, the long story short, session related information isn't as sensitive. So <laughs> now I'm off track. Expiry isn't as sensitive when you've got cash. So you can reset a password and it can look like the session didn't expire, but it's actually got a period of time till it expired because of cash, cash, what have you. And so some websites might do that every 10 minutes. They might do that every 30 minutes, but they have an expiry there and they're accepting the risk of a longer expiry because they need to allow for distributed distribution of their assets. And so in that case, when you're testing a large asset and you're testing session invalidation, it's worth testing. Does it actually invalidate? Is there a window of time here? And you might put that as informational if it's a long expiry, if it's, it's usually if it's past the 30 minute mark that it starts to reach the point you might want to hit it on a report. Probably not going to have a bug bounty there because it's going to be something that they're already very aware of and that they've taken on board as an acceptable risk because they also, at being a larger organization, have more mitigating processes around anything that could happen in that window. Um, and probably the last one, pretty common, it's in the VRT because it was such a common misconception that people make, is CSRF on logout. So. CSRF on logout, some people report it and they say, oh, you should take care of it anyway. I don't care that it's a P5. And well, the reason it's a P5 is what's the impact? So always thinking about that. What's the impact? If a website holistically has CSRF done properly, what is your impact of a logout function in CSRF? It's that you'll log the user out, but you first got to convince them to go to your URL or to, you know, the payload has to execute in a means it's not a remotely attackable vector in the sense that you can go, I'm going to log this user out by projecting my thought into them. Um, <laughs> strange mood today. Um, reality being that the impact's mitigated there to the point that it's informational and it's not something that you would typically report on a pen test or typically report in a bug bounty with any expectation of it being seen as impactful or eligible for an award. It's just it's just not. Um, if you are able to do CSRF on logout, that's great in terms of it being an indicator for, I want to check CSRF through all of this website because there's something funny going on that allows it to work on the logout in isolation. I want to just check that they've implemented properly here and you should start to do a, a deeper look. But you wouldn't stop and go, okay, I'm going to report that as it is today. All right, so that's the common misconceptions. And it all comes back to you. And you've probably, if you've watched any of my content, heard me say this before, but as an attacker, I could. So the common misconceptions here, as an attacker, I could capture a password reset token as it's being used, not as valuable as as an attacker, I can read information because the website's using HTTP. Different vulnerability, right? Different use case, different report entirely one's got impact one doesn't so as an attacker i could always keep it in mind and if you're a little disheartened by the opener where i said hey you're going to dupe a lot with this please please don't make let that be the takeaway of this video go to port swiggers authorization labs they have amazing depths of content that will lead you to bug bounties they're going to teach you more than i can in this video of authorization based information i really recommend going and studying that um I also recommend doing the Essentials badge at uh, Pentester Lab. They've got a lot that orients around authorization that I think takes you to a deeper understanding than, you know, lack of password confirmation on delete account and things that are going to dupe a lot because they're so easy to find. It's ultimately with everything bug bounties, it's as an attacker I could and it's technical understanding to a depth that allows you to explain to a customer because you have to remember that the customers and they're incredibly smart people they're developers they're people that understand security they're not idiots and so these basics these fundamentals they're often already thinking about or they know about and it's the issues that take more deep learning of security than a developer has time to do because they're mastering their craft that are going to lead you to bug bounties and that are going to lead you to being a better pen tester and I really do believe going through Port Swigger's content, going through Pentester Lab's content is going to put you on a path to allow you to become that subject matter expert in the security lens of this and go down it. And after you've done that, if you want a recommendation of how I would start to look for privilege escalation and things like that, I would recommend learning Burp Suite Authorize. And I would recommend looking for items that you can perform unauthenticated that you should be only allowed to perform authenticated or looking for privilege escalation, which is where 
an admin user should only have that function, but you can use a normal user session token to perform a function such as adding a user to an organization or changing an account property. Those are the kind of bugs that tend not to dupe because they tend to get fixed quickly when they're reported and they're harder to find because websites have so much context. They change so regularly. These things introduce more regularly and they're the kind of things you can find in older programs versus, hey, I deleted my account. It didn't ask me for a password. There's probably a dupe. It's probably sitting on a scrum backlog somewhere. So two different approaches. Um, I really think going down the harder path of study is worth it. I'm probably always going to lean that way because I see what I see on queue and I've experienced what I have as a hunter. And I know it's a bit, it's, it's the harder way, but it's well worth it. And I hope that um, I provided you some value here. If so, thank you for watching. If not, thank you anyway. And uh, let's, let's chat about it on Twitter or YouTube comments, where have you. I, uh, I really want to keep improving my content and hearing from you makes it all that much better. Thank you very much.